Next, we're going to talk about throw ball. Throw ball is a method of installing your rope into the canopy of the tree from the ground. This can be used in larger, taller, deciduous, broad spreading trees where we're not able to get into the tree from the lower branches. We're going to stay nice and clean and organized when we're using our, our uh, throw bag here because this can be the biggest time vampire on a job site. If you're not clean and organized with your throw bag, you're going to waste a lot of time in this step. This is my throw cube. pops open like this and then inside I have my throw line and my throw balls. You want to keep this as clean, neat and tidy as you can. Never any sticks or debris in here and always with the end of the throw line tied to the top of the bag. If I drop this into the bag before I close it I'll lose the end of the line and when I pull it out it'll be full of knots and it'll just be a big rat's nest that you won't be able to use properly. So again, always tie this to the edge of the bag or attach it to the Velcro tab when you're done using it. In these side pockets, I have my throw balls. A throw ball is like a bean bag sack of lead shot that are different weights. We use different weights to get to different heights. So I have three throw balls in here. At least two is optimal. I have a 12 ounce, a 14 ounce, and a 16 ounce throw bag. My 12 ounce I can throw a little bit higher, but sometimes it has trouble coming back down through very uh, craggy or exfoliant bark. Uh, when you have bark which is uh, uh, thicker and has uh, more friction, like uh, black cherry or certain conifers, uh, this might not be the best bag to throw. The 14 ounce is a, a nice middle road. You can get decent height out of it, but it will still come back down to the ground. And the 16 ounce, you won't be able to get it as high, but you can be sure that this is going to come back down to the ground after you throw it. I'm going to select the 14 ounce throw bag as a nice middle road, and I'm going to attach it to my throw line using one of two knots. The first knot is an anchor hitch, and the second knot is a bunt line. There's a slight variation on these knots though, because I always want to finish them off slippery. Finishing off a knot slippery means that instead of passing the tail in the end of the knot, you're going to pass a bite. This is very important, because if you do not pass a bite through, you're going to have a terrible time trying to get this undone because this is very thin diameter line. This is only about two millimeter diameter line. So once it's loaded up with a knot really tight, you're going to have to cut it off if you don't tie it slippery. So as you can see, I have a small loop here. That's the bite that I've passed through the end of the knot. And then I have a tail. When I pull on the tail, it pops the knot right out and I can disconnect my throw bag. Let's tie it one more time. This time I'll use a becket or a bunt line, wrap it around, leave my finger through there for a reference point, and then pull it tight. There you have it. Slippery becket. Pops off nice and easy. Okay. So in terms of throw line maintenance, one thing that we always want to do here is I'm going to take a little bit of a throw sideways and just spool some of this out to make sure that there's no knots or rats nesting or um, uh, big, big uh, nasty balls of rope in there. Then I'm going to feed it back in, always in a linear fashion. Never ever do this. If it's all in a pile on the ground, if you decide to pick it all up in one piece and throw it in, you're going to be wasting the rest of your day trying to untangle it, I promise you. Feed it in in a linear fashion and just spool it in randomly. That's going to give you a nice clean run of rope when you throw that throw ball out of the bag. When I'm done using this, I'm going to stow this ball into the side pocket 
and leave it tied on, or I'm gonna disconnect my rope, my throw line, and then I'm gonna tie it to the top of the bag so I do not lose that length of line. Once I'm done with that, I will not leave it on the ground like this. A strong gust of wind is gonna come along, pick up this bag and throw it like a tumbleweed and you're gonna lose all your hard work and organization. So once you've got your line in the tree, I know you're excited to climb and get up there, but please, close your throw bag, fold it up and lock it so that it's ready to stow. Once you've done this, you can do whatever you want with it. You can throw it around, toss it in your bag, throw it in the truck, it doesn't matter. But before that step is done, you're not finished with your throw bag. All right, I've got my throw ball tied up and I'm ready to start throwing. I'm gonna take a bite of my throw line, pass it through the steel ring, and then let the ball dangle. If I work the rope like this, I can get more for a longer pendulum or I can feed it back into my bag so I can get a shorter pendulum for a shorter throw. I like to use a longer pendulum because it takes less effort and I find I can be a little more accurate. I can get the throw a little higher. You can always get more power with a longer pendulum. So a lot of this is about rhythm. Notice how my hands come up so that my ball doesn't hit against the ground. If I just swing like this, I'm not really getting a lot of power and my ball is gonna end up hitting the ground. So by bringing my hands forward and back, I develop a rhythm so I can feel the swing. I wanna look up at my target and when I'm ready, I'm gonna call stand clear. Everybody else on site is going to give me an all clear so that they know that I'm about to throw this in the air and then I'm going to let it go. Stand clear. I've thrown my line up through the branch union which I want to use and I want to tie into and uh, now I need to isolate my throw line and by isolate I mean I want both legs of that line over one branch and then cleanly down through the canopy. I need this in order to install my friction saver so I can pull my rope up into the canopy. In order to achieve this, I'm gonna connect a second throw ball to the other end of my line. So I have my thrown side in there and then I'm gonna take my 16 ounce, which is my heaviest throw ball, and I'm gonna connect it to the ground side of my line with a slippery anchor hitch, okay? Always slippery. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pull this up. So now that I've got my throw line over my desired branch union in the tree, I'm going to remotely install my ring and ring friction saver. In order to install this into the canopy from the ground, I'm going to need to use my throw line and my throw ball to pull it up there. So I'm going to disconnect my throw ball from my throw line, pass the end of the throw line through the small ring, and then reconnect my throw ball. Then I need to take the tail end of my line and pass it through the large ring. In order to do this, I'm going to pull now the entire length of throw line through this ring. Or we can just fast forward this. Okay. Now that I've got my throw line all pulled through the big ring, when I pull on the leg of throw line, which is through the big ring, I can start pulling up my throw ball 
which is gonna also pull up my ring and ring friction saver. Now, as I pull this, it's gonna travel up into the canopy of the tree, over top of the branch union which I've selected, and then pop back over. Okay, now that I've got here, it's crucial, I do not wanna pull this over slowly. If I pull it over slowly, it's just gonna get stuck in the union and it's gonna be a big mess. I want to pop it over so it jumps over the branch union and the ball comes back down. So I'm gonna let off a little bit to give myself a couple of inches and then on three, we're gonna pop it over. Stand clear, one, two, three. And now you have your throw line through the rings of the friction saver and coming back down to the ground. Okay, I'm disconnecting my throw ball once again. I'm gonna put it in my pocket. I don't wanna drop it on the ground and lose it in the snow. And now I'm going to make a clove hitch and pass it over the end of the rope. Cinch it tight about six inches in. Then I'm gonna take half hitches and tie as many half hitches as I can over the end. This is going to ensure that the throw line doesn't come disconnected from the rope. If that happens, then I've got hardware stranded in the tree. We absolutely don't want that to happen. So that's why, to be absolutely sure, I tie many half hitches before my clove hitch and I tie it right to the tip of the rope because that is what is going to pass through the ring. And so we want it to be able to pass through that cleanly. All right, we're all done climbing and we're ready to pull out our ring and ring friction saver. So in order to do that safely, we want to make sure that our ring and ring friction saver comes down to the ground in a controlled manner. So um, as you may recall, when we installed it, we put the tail end of our rope through the little ring and then through the big ring. So now that's gonna reverse and the knot that we tie is gonna pass through the big ring and it's gonna grab or capture the little ring and pull everything down to the ground. To make sure that that comes down safely, we're also gonna install a throw line onto the end of the rope to make sure that we can lower that in a controlled fashion. Now, when I tie my uh, clove hitch, the safest way to do this is to go past the knot so that it's got something to grab, cinch up my clove hitch, and then just like on the install, we're gonna use a bunch of half hitches on the tail end of the line to make sure they don't end up disconnected. One, two, three, right to the end. There you have it. Now we're ready to pull out our friction saver. through. Here we go. One, two, three. Nice and controlled. Now that I'm down on the ground, I'm almost home free. But the last thing I want to do is turn this into a giant tangled mess and undo all my work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect one end of my uh, throw line. I'm going to untie my knot and remove it from the friction saver. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this throw line back up into the canopy and gently uninstall in a neat and organized fashion. There you go. Friction saver is free of the throw line. 
throw lines coming out of the tree. And now I neatly pack it back inside my throw cube and we're all done. So that's how to use your throw ball and throw bag to install a climbing line into a tree, how to install a ring and ring friction saver and then safely pull it down to the ground. Just remember, keep those throw bags organized and free of debris, knots and anything that could get in the way and, and cause those tangles to get thrown up in the tree or that's gonna eat up all your climbing time. All right, thanks for watching.